The GameCube had over 700 games, and it was almost guaranteed that some of them would get lost in the mix. I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I'm going to show you 10 games for the GameCube that you missed. Probably. Second Opinion Games Conan was a 3D action-adventure game with some light RPG elements. Depending on how many animals and creatures you slaughtered depends on how much you could level up Conan's attacks. And this was done fairly well. Also, the save feature here is really not done as well. You have to earn the right to save by finding the different collectible MacGuffins, meaning that saves are limited here. So if you want to play, make sure you have the time to sit down and play the game fully. Also, the character models from start to finish, whether it be the enemies or Conan himself, have been done fairly well. The music is some of the best that the console even has to offer, and the sound effects are all done fairly well, and the whole gameplay is also fairly good. Why did it not come over here? Well, because it's one of those games that was stuck in the PAL territories only. If you happen to live in England, you probably could pick this game up for $5. If you lived in America, well then chances are you never even seen it or even knew that it existed. Largo Winch is a rather interesting game. It's sort of like a point-and-click adventure, but with the controls of Resident Evil. Also, the voice acting here is darn right hilarious. I think they actually got the same guy that played Shamu in the Shenmue games to actually play the lead role here, where you play as a billionaire with a kind of a slimy best friend who tries to con good-looking girls into sleeping with them. The game starts off as you try to donate thousands of gallons of metal which is a highly perishable item to some tribe in Africa, which probably doesn't have any type of refrigeration, and you are seen as a great humanitarian for it. Your secretary comes with some papers, the papers are stolen as you try to defuse a bomb that turns out to be an alarm clock, and then you just go through the game. Every segment is chopped up into little tiny pieces, and then you just have to run around pointing and clicking. Nothing is too hard to figure out here. Overall, I would say this is closer to an interactive movie than anything. The story progresses very quickly, and the women progress even faster. This game I would have really liked to play if again it wasn't stuck in those rotten pal territories. Yeah, you took another one from me, Europe. Robocop is a first-person shooter taking place in his own universe. Of course, you play as the walking tank Robocop himself, gunning down all of the bad guys. Except for the bad guys that surrender very quickly, they are usually girls, meaning that girls even stink at being good criminals. You just press the arrest button and they suddenly fade out of existence. This is darn right horrifying. I think I'd rather be shot. At least then I know I'm dead rather than wondering if I ever existed to begin with or if you have any wonders whatsoever. And like I said, this game was made in France. So how come it only came out in Japan? All of the language here is spoken in English with the different controls and menu boxes in Japanese. And the game even starts off with a horrible control scheme that you have to then fix through trial and error in the options menu. If you do manage to figure it out, it becomes a playable game, but only just barely, as Titus is one of the worst game developers that ever was. Roadkill is one of the more mature games for the little purple lunchbox that could. It's kind of like Grand Theft Auto mixed with a whole lot of twisted metal. It's open world, there's missions here, and you mostly just drive around shooting everyone and running over people and making them into roadkill. It's really cool how sometimes the bodies attach to your vehicle and then get drug around. Of course, you could level up your weapons and make tons of money and put even gangs 
against each other in this game. So how come you probably never heard of it or never played it? Well, if you live in Europe, you didn't even get the stinking game. Same in Japan. And in America, it became quite rare because of how vulgar it actually was. Some people just picked it up and held on to it because they knew it would be hard to find later, and they were darn right. Trying to find this game on the open market now is nearly impossible because of those Europeans stealing it and taking it over there, and also everyone that wanted a more adult-themed game to play over here. Roadkill is probably one of the better GameCube games. It's just a sad thing that not many people will get a chance to play it. Micro Machines. The tiny toys seem to be brought to life by some type of extraterrestrial figure. Now you'll try to race around for reasons. Because of these tiny toys and the fact that they're in a house, everything takes place in a real style world with one really creepy guy that sits in the bathtub as his Micro Machines sort of race around him. This is a pretty darn fun game for those racing and toy enthusiasts. Why did it never Ever come out over here? Well, it's again one of those European only exclusives. Probably because it got held up with the toy rights to make the games over there and not so much over here. How is the racing overall? It's a little bit like rock and roll racing, but without the great music. And you do have to memorize the tracks if you're going to win. Chances are you're going to oversteer a couple of corners. So this is one of those games that you really have to practice and learn in inside and out in order to get good at it. Overall, it's a decent game, and I recommend trying it out if you can. Pokemon Channel was a spiritual successor to Hey You Pikachu. It was also designed to get you to spend money in real life to buy some of the e-reader cards because it worked with that system. Meaning that this was a spectacular fail in nearly every way, shape, and form. Sometimes you'll be watching cartoons. Other times you'll be on a QVC-like channel trying to buy things with the points you earn from watching cartoons. Sometimes Pokemon join you and then you'll report to this scientist guy who's trying to figure out what best shows are best suited for the Pokemon themselves. I figure that this whole game sort of actually takes place in the 80s, wrapping around how to get kids to spend more money on things. The Pokemons themselves being kids and them trying to get them just educated enough to figure out how to get their parents' money as fast as possible. Why does not many people have this game? Again, it was a pretty big failure. There wasn't a whole lot going on with it. There was maybe up to 250,000 copies sold, but a lot of people just held on to it or more likely threw it in the trash because the overall gameplay was garbage. Today it sells for over 500 freaking dollars on eBay and that is a deal if you could get it at that price, but I don't think it's worth more than 10. Mortal Kombat Deception, taking place after Deadly Alliance, meaning that some of your favorite characters have now been completely obliterated. However, it still has Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Mortal Kombat was not about to make that mistake ever again. The gameplay here has been refined just a little bit over its predecessor to be extremely well done. How come you probably never played this one? It's because it came out over a year after it did for the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. But last to come out does not mean that it was a bad thing because they tweaked and fixed the game. Some of the mechanics that were broken have been improved. They added on tons more unlockables including whole extra characters so you could play as Goro himself. There's also a lot of mini games here that are just really fun to play because of the game's low arrival and low print run and the fact that it was on a console that was sort of meant for younger children, not many people even played this one, let alone got their hands on it. Neighbors from Hell. Everybody in this game is completely awful. Of course, you have the white trash neighbors that are just horrible to actually have living next to you. But your protagonist isn't that much better. He calls some type of film crew to film him putting super glue on the binoculars of his neighbor 
causing him to like rip off his eyelids. This game gets pretty dark pretty quick. If you're stuck in the neighbor's house and he sees you, well then he is going to beat you to death and rightly so. He has every right to do so. After all, you're trying to murder him in his house and do it on television. The graphical art style here is one of the things I like about the most. The clunky controls you do get used to, and the gameplay is fairly fun for those puzzle element people that really like this style game. I like to think of it as sort of a modern update of Spy vs. Spy, only with white trash people. This is another one of those games that was left in Europe, so if you live in England, good job, you get to play a game that I didn't. At least not until relatively recently. But Ugly Martians Zoom or Doom, it's a futuristic F-Zero-like game. It might be quite a bit easier than that. You also have weapons to make it a little bit more like Mario Kart. Some of the voice acting here was done by the characters from oh, the Animaniacs. Like the graphics bad. look Whatever pretty good, the controls are fairly tight. Sometimes when aliens pull alongside you, you could hit a taunt button and taunt them along. Now, this one actually has a pretty cool story why you probably Probably never knew about it because GameFAX says that the game itself was cancelled. I had to pick up a European version, which of course GameFAX also says was cancelled, but some people claim to actually have a North American version of this game. I have never seen it out in the wild in all my time, and I've also rarely seen it on eBay itself when I did, again, it was the PAL version. So if you happen to have a copy of this game, please let me know. And boy is it ever just weird and really average. Bomberman Land 2. Now you're probably more familiar with the 3D style games, but this is more of a collection of mini games. You could have something like Buster Brothers or one of those sliding puzzle games in the main game itself, where it's just an amusement park as an excuse to play tons of mini games. There's also a Mario Kart style racing game here that is worth it just for the price of this racing game. I'm serious, this racing experience is tight. It actually feels like you're more like real life go-kart racing than in some type of Mario Kart experience. I really love how the karts control themselves. There's also the original style of blowing everyone up in an ultimate death match with you and four of your friends duking it out for total bombing supremacy. If you're playing against the computer, you can always hit the start button to speed everything up just so you can jump right back into the action as fast as possible. And a full-on RPG dungeon crawling experience experience here is the whole thing that brings it all together. Sadly, this is the part where it was all done in Japanese as this was a game that was left in Japan and really had no reason to because this game is one of the best games for the GameCube and it is certainly the best Bomberman game up until this date. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it and my goal here was to at least told you about one game that you never knew existed and I'm pretty sure I did with this list. And if there's a game that you think was lost to time or to the GameCube itself, please let me know in the comment box down below and until later, I will see you again guys.